Hello and welcome to some more Squadron 42 updates, announcements and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to talk about all of the latest Squadron 42 information from the CitizenCon announcements, the new trailers and gameplay that was shown and what this means for the project and the Star Citizen single player campaign. Squadron 42 Episode 1 has been announced as feature complete and that is now in its polishing phase. There is still no release date for this though. I think we might start to see more dev information starting to come out of CIG in the forms of shows and lots of hype and sort of the start of a marketing campaign. I would expect a release date to be announced at some point within the next 12 months. When will that actually be released though? We don't know. Chris Roberts is saying that it's in its final phases, but we want to make sure that it's perfect before it's released. There are rumors that they've started working on another Squadron 42 trailer apparently, which might be coming out relatively soon. A dev put out a now deleted tweet showing some shots and saying they were working on a trailer. It's quite possible that CIG are now planning a marketing and advertising campaign for Squadron 42 and bam, once they've got all that planned and potentially started, they'll settle on a date and then release that to us. All of this is fantastic news for Star Citizen players as lots of dev teams have now moved to Star Citizen's persistent universe features we should see a lot more developed and refined squadron 42 features coming into star citizen over the next 12 months and a lot more progress on just a load more persistent universe stuff because more resources are now available so there was a presentation at CitizenCon about Squadron 42 and they showed a new trailer. So the new trailer had these two F-7A Hornets patrolling the Vega system in 2945 on the day of the Battle of Vega. So this is basically eight years in the past of current Star Citizen time, which is 2953. But it makes sense because if you're playing a character in Squadron 42, it's going to be your past effectively before you're actually in the Persistent Universe, right? So these Hornets, they meet up with the massive second UEE fleet. There's loads of Idris and Javelins and Hammerheads and Retaliators, multiple Bengals, all above Vega. It is a huge battle group. The visuals of this are awesome and I believe it's actually all in in game, in game engine or stuff. Uh, we then move to the UEES Gauntlet, a Javelin class destroyer. And we join the player character as they sit alone viewing the fleet while composing a message for loved ones. It shows that however you customize and um, choose your character, they're going to be appropriately voiced and animated. There is a reason to take time building your character. You are not a silent protagonist. You are very much an active member of the crew on the ship that you are in. But this, I believe, is going to be the start of the game where you have your characters sort of like a crewman and they're not a pilot yet. They are then joined by Gillian Anderson's character, Captain McLaren, who interrupts them looking out at the stars. You're a bit nervous as the captain is talking to you. She gives you a bit of a pep talk and asks if you've seen the F8s, the uh, heavy fighters up close, for some marketing purposes, it seems. Obviously, she goes, they're, they're beasts, they're amazing ships. Maybe you should buy them. She doesn't, she doesn't say that, but... That's the implication I get. She gets called to the bridge, but before she goes, she says that she's seen you've applied for the Flight Academy again and to keep trying. That's the little sort of sneak peek of the trailer, but Cloud Imperium then talked and showed a lot more. They are dialing in combat encounters, as well as making sure the player experience is as immersive as possible. And this is all part of the polish phase. There are huge amounts of UI and flight improvements that they've made. They are now having a sort of large array of AI behaviors and combat tactics based on the ship, based on the loadouts. The new precision targeting mode for characters allows for much more choice and options when fighting, zooming in, sort of targeting, um, particular hard points of ships or particular parts of a fighter. The remaining devs working on Squadron are organized into strike teams that are focusing on various areas and sections of the game. They showed off a boat, which reminded me of a Half-Life 2, sort of the, the dam and, and boat section. You're driving around, you're evading an enemy cutlass here, and there's, there's this cool big dam. Uh, there's atmospheric flight and combat that's being worked on as well, and I believe this probably needs some of the most work, as they still need to get master modes, control surfaces, and the sort of gold standard of the ships, HUDs and MFDs, all in there. The planetary scenes are looking good, though. They have made the general ability to use tools and interact with the world easier, and there are going to be various environmental puzzles. The military multi-tool is your friend here. It just gives you 
the abilities of pretty much every multi-tool attachment and you think that you could possibly want to uh, use for interaction is in that tool well, they showed off a physics puzzle and that you can sort of move barrels around and go lots of different paths and uh, that sort of stuff they showed a staff error being attacked by pirates and the player coming to assist with mark hamill's character the hud is much cleaner now enemy comms are very much wing commander style with them going oh no you killed me oh, and stuff like that they showed some fps combat and stealth improvements the ability to quickly grab items and ammo there is a load of improvements to locomotion for the characters weapon handling scanning and ai you can sort of do a, a scan pulse boop which makes you very obvious that you're there but allows you to see through uh, the walls and terrain for a while terrain is destructible and will take damage under bullet fire as well and just the general the hail of combat uh, we did see that even taking a couple of hits drops your health real low i am curious about balance and difficulty settings here they showed a stealth or exploration section where they um, in EVA welded open a maintenance access panel and then were presented by a load of lasers that they needed to avoid. There are a lot of cool tactile interactions and ways to complete puzzles. Um, there are loads of buttons and levers. They can all be pressed. They will have animations. It will feel very much like you're part of the world. There's some fantastic vistas. They showed sort of turning up to a planet or moon uh, with this terraforming platform and all these clouds and stuff around. One of the things the polish phase allows them to do is to go through lots of parts of the game and go actually this needs a little extra bit here or we can improve this here they are doing pickups for the female character and additional interactions with npcs that you can trigger uh admiral bishop who they first showed in 2015 um at citizen con there has been vastly improved with much better facial visuals this is true of all of the lead characters there is another scene where bishop gives a little speech to the fleet before they enter combat mark hamill and john reese davies character have been significantly updated as well and trejo um one of the characters in game it looks entirely different they look like they're built with an entirely new engine which is not a million miles from the truth there have been so many updates to the engine and now it is effectively the star engine all these improvements have been brought into squadron 42 and it looks so much better there are some amazing scene updates one of them mentions a xian hauler we haven't actually seen the xian represented in game nor that ship in game yet uh, but the cinematics a lot of them are sort of you are directly involved in some of them you can break away from um if you wish your character isn't sort of there and uh, yeah it, it's the whole cinematic experience it's more of an interactive extremely interactive movie they showed the updates they made to a character adding the new text and the sweat and tears and oh my god it makes the range of emotion just really awesome they are improving animations and npc interactions between missions and during the pre and post briefing phases um you will feel like you're on a living breathing ship with a load of npcs going about their business the ship needs to operate and sort of um, is moving places when you land your ship at the carrier the team there refuels and maintains your ship the flight deck team they are also bug and visual oddity hunting because there's so much you can sort of do and see in the game you can move around the ship and there's always going to be something like going on so you can imagine there's a lot of potential bugs that could occur there and there's a lot of uh, polish that they can do from running to jumping to playing with the environment it's all extremely tactile they showed off the shooting range and some combat experiences weapon jams and takedowns a sewer level they are now applying the visual updates to the rest of the npc cast as well there is a ton of really beautiful looking points of interest scenes and locations to explore and they are continuing to improve them now there are some crazy looking locations as well very alien looking compared to the vertical slice again this looks like an entirely different next gen game i am loving the ship maps and mini maps for the interiors of ships but also the crew operating mfds and things happening on screen and on ship um, when they're actually doing stuff on their terminals there is a range of missions and downtimes between them they showed a massive space station that is very busy with lots of ships and operations and just people going about their business chris reiterated he wants squadron 42 to be this generation's wing commander they want to get the polish right and they will give us a release date as soon as it's locked in at the very end of cig's video they showed the vandal in armor assumedly hunting for humans we have not seen pretty much any of them 
properly in first person yet. Nothing sort of, um, how do we fight them? What's combat like with them? Again, I suspect this is an area that needs a lot of polish still. It's obviously uh, potentially partly because they want to save a lot of it for surprise or hype leading up to Squadron 42's release. An interesting question is though, how can Squadron 42 be feature complete when CIG are still flashing out their flight model, quantum and various other bits? Well, I think the majority of that is actually now complete and the core features needed for Squadron 42, it is just considered polished now, at least by CIG. But that might also be the reason that we didn't have a release date yet because there is a reasonable amount of polish to do there. CIG would have no excuses for a poor launch of Squadron 42 though. They have given themselves all the time. They need to get any fixes and bugs and polish needed. They can test out any elements of the game that they need to. Once they release, bam, it should be should be great. I'm hoping it's not always online or anything like that or a preload and then a big day one patch situation. I hope they can get all that sort of stuff nailed down before release. It should make for an amazing game and I'm hoping it's in our hands by the end of 2024. There is no word on if Squadron 42 Episode 2 has started production yet, but it's very much its own AAA game. Boom! That's it for your Squadron 42 updates and analysis of that CitizenCon presentation. I am really looking forward to Squadron. I am so glad they announced its sort of feature completeness, uh, but I was a little upset that there was no um, release date yet, but I I'm I'm along for the ride now. I loved what they showed. I thought everything looks absolutely beautiful. It's great to see all of the updates. Clan Imperium really need to have a fantastic at least 9 out of 10 game with Squadron 42's release to prove that they are able to make a fantastic game with Star Citizen as well. I think that I think they will be able to do that. I, I'm hoping it's sort of 9.5 at least. But I'm really interested to know what you think. Did you like all those Squadron 42 updates, those new trailers, all the new sort of development information they gave us? Do you think announcing as feature complete was enough or are you still going, oh, I want a release date, please, please not two years away, please, please next year? Do you not really care about Squadron 42 so much, but you do care about the Squadron 42's um, sort of feature set that's coming to the Persistent Universe? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you like using your eye holes for extra immersion in Star Citizen and help aim and do some cool stuff? Well, you can with Tobii Eye Tracker 5, which is on sale at the moment. This gives you native high precision head and eye tracking in Star Citizen. Very cool for general immersion, for combat, both in ship or on foot. They are absolutely fantastic pieces of kit, and both Zin and I have one. Use the links below to grab one for 15% off or to find out more. What the hell are you? It's NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer, enabling you to minimize your presence on the internet, almost like a cloaking device. It also allows you to hunt out the best TV and movies and shopping deals by changing your region. It prevents big internet from gathering and using your personal data. There's even a data breach scanner and mesh net for your own remote private network included. When Zinn asked, what's the Predator movie got to do with NordVPN or CitizenCon or Star Citizen? I said, what's any of our NordVPN ads got to do with anything? Grab yourself NordVPN in the links below for a seamless, secure internet experience. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway. For October 2023, we are giving away a Constellation Phoenix. This luxury multi-crew ship can be used as a mission runner, an explorer, a base of operations, and more. It comes with a luxury P-72 Archimedes snub, as well as the Lynx rover, allowing you to have on and off planet excursions. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. This is the bit of the video where I appeal to you to try and join the channel memberships and give us money. We have a load of you that are Patreons or have become YouTube channel members with the join button under my videos, and that goes a huge way in helping the channel and enabling us to make daily Star Citizen news entertainment. But there are a load of other ways to help us, liking, commenting, sharing these videos, that helps the channel grow Thank you for watching to the end. Please get involved in the comment section and I hope you have a great October.